appointment of the chair is subject to the mayor's approval. So I'd like to invite nominations for chair and then the mayor will have to approve it following this meeting. And then following that, I'd also like to invite nominations for chair just for this meeting, awaiting his approval of chair, if that makes sense. So would there anybody like to nominate somebody to chair the transport committee for this year? Thank you. Or would anybody like to nominate anyone to uh, chair this meeting today? <laughs> Welcome, Councillor Aldred. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, exciting times ahead. Welcome to today's meeting. So, my next um, challenge is to, I want nominations for two vice chairs, please. Now, I'd like one um, from the leading group and then one from the opposition, if you don't mind, please. Okay, have we got a second one? Okay. Now. Sorry? All oh, right, okay, no problem. Sorry, couldn't quite hear you there, so. Okay, so everybody in agreement with those two vice chairs? Okay, now I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna split that if, if people don't mind. And, um, on the point of vice chair, one of the vice chairs, because of Roger's experience over on the bus side of things, so anything to do with roadside for future, being that there's a special interest in reality over that. And Doreen's, in that point of view, with Metrolink and Rail Point, anything that's coming on, uh, on Rail's point of view, um, going over to the sub, you know, to your side of things, is your special interest. Is everybody in favour of that? Have we any objections to that? No? Thank you very much. Thank you for that. So that moves me uh, swiftly on to item four, membership. So we've got a list of membership there. Um, is all those, everybody in agreement of that membership? Okay. Okay, thank you for that. Item five, members code of conduct, oh, sorry. Okay, item five, members code of conduct. Okay, so there's obligation under the GMCA members code of conduct. Um, are you all agreement of that? Thank you very much. Item six, the annual declaration of interest form, which is attached. Please, if you've got anything to, uh, to announce, then please fill in the form and hand it to Nicola on your leaving. Thank you. Item seven, terms of reference and rules of procedure. I'm going to pass over to Gwyn on this. She's the deputy monitor officer. Welcome, Gwyn. Thank you, Chairman. Um, attached to your agenda, you will have the uh, terms of reference and the rules of procedure for this uh, newly constituted committee. Uh, just a reminder that the new joint committee has been enabled under a statutory order, um, and it is um, a, a joint committee of your constituent councils, the GMCA and the Mayor. So the, the purpose of the order and of this committee is to provide a focus uh, for coordination and integration of transport functions. And these terms of reference have been agreed by those three entities. Um, the key areas for this committee are accountability, that's your monitoring role. 
in relation to service operators, transport for Greater Manchester, highway authorities and the infrastructure providers. Uh, secondly, in relation to implementation, and that's the delivery of the local transport plan, including the capital programme. And thirdly, policy development. As I say, the terms of reference are for noting, unless members have any questions. Has any members got any questions? No? Okay, thank you very much. Moving swiftly on, item eight, appointment to outside bodies. So, um, got Greater Manchester Accessible Transport Board. Uh, Labour nominations are myself, Mark Aldred, uh, Roger, Phil, and the Teak. Okay, and we've had one Conservative nomination of Doreen. So is everybody in agreement of that? Okay, thank you very much. And we've got the Greater Manchester Low Carbon Hub appointment, and I have two nominations here. Evangelica from Labour Group, and I've got Nathan Evans, okay, from the Conservatives. So we'll have to have a, a vote on that. So... Um, all those in favour of Angelica? Okay, thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Nathan. <laughs> Just this time. Thanks very much anyway for putting your name forward, appreciate thank it. You. So, moving on now to ordinary business. So, item nine. Have we got any apologies? Is there any substitute for John? No? Okay. Any other apologies? No, thank you very much. Um, item 10, there are no chairs announcements. Item 11, declarations of interest. Like we said, there's a, there's a form there. Please hand it to Nicola on the way out. Item 12, draft transport committee work programme. And I'm going to pass over to Kate for this one. Okay. Thanks, Chair. Um, so there's, uh, the paper uh, that was circulated with the PAC um, outlines uh, a number of different topics that member, uh, members may wish to consider this year. Obviously, the setting of this committee's work programme is uh, absolutely a, a matter for the committee. Um, what we've done as officers is to have a 12-month look ahead um, and suggest some of the items that you may want to consider uh, contemporaneously at the times decisions are being made. Um, the three points there, and Gwyn mentioned them uh, earlier in relation to this committee's terms of reference and roles, um, the point in relation to accountability, implementation and policy development, um, the topics that are listed on the, um, the paper that was circulated seeks to cover all of those different roles. Um, so when the committee have considered uh, item 13, um, you may wish to then uh, revisit the issue of your work programme and develop that over the next few months. Uh, obviously not a matter necessarily for today. Um, one thing to note is that there aren't items listed currently for your August meeting, the meeting on the 9th of August. Um, from a, an officer perspective, um, the item that's listed for September around the development of a rail prospectus for Greater Manchester um, is due to be considered by the combined authority at the end of this month, uh, and it may be timely uh, for this committee to consider it in August, um, pending publication in September. Okay, has anybody got any questions or comments on that? Yep. Could I ask you, Chair, whether when, when you speak to the GM Mayor, whether you could just discuss the issue of lobbying with him? Um, I mean, I know there's a reduced budget, so we, we don't do as much probably lobbying that we used to. But when you think of the amount we used to do at party conferences with members of parliament, recently I was, I, I was speaking to the three Salford MPs, and they said to me that there's a lot less transport information coming to them uh, and what does come tends to come via the GM Mayor rather than from this committee. And so it's whether you and Andy Burnham can, can try to reach an agreement what he will be doing, you know, in terms of uh, trying to influence the political debate and then what we need to do, because there are a lot of holes, if you like, that we need to start filling in. And we need to particularly tell members of parliament what our aspirations are in Greater Manchester and, and what we're focusing on, you know, in the next 12 to 18 months. Certainly take that forward. No problem at all. Thank you. Anybody, any other questions? Angelica? 
thank you. Uh, I have uh, three items to ask about the um, to ask to be scheduled uh, in the future. Uh, one of them is social value, a project, uh, an update on that. Uh, another one, a note from the previous item that one of the jobs that we have to do is to produce and develop policies in relation to road safety function and budget for the roads for road safety accident prevention. It would be really good to see where we're up to on that. And the, lastly, another key function is to monitor and oversee the activities and performance of TFGM. Uh, so I would like a report on that as well, please. Liam. Thank you, Chair. Um, if possible, can we look to get some sort of report or, or group together looking on the policy development theme of connectivity of our small towns uh, who have frequently been left out um, when it comes to transport planning or so residents feel? Okay, no problem. Take that away with us. Anybody else? Sorry. Um, it's sort of related is the, the speed camera partnership we have and, and partly related to that is the drive safety stuff we do I, I'm not aware we've ever had a look at either of them for a while and I think both might be timely, in particular the speed camera stuff Good point, thank you We could add that, might Certainly. be something for our August meeting maybe Thank you Anybody got anything else? Yes? Can we add the red light jump in? Uh, add him on, yeah. Mark, the bus lane camera situation, can we have a full breakdown of how many cameras we've got in Greater Manchester and where they're all situated and why the small towns, towns have been missing out? Item 13, Greater Manchester Transport Committee structure. Okay, now, um, we've all had, or majority of us have had a discussion on the different options over the past few weeks, and it came down to two options, option A and option B. So, I'm just going to go off a show of hands while we're all electronic. Um, all those in favour of option A, please show now. That's option, uh, it says option A in my boo, but <laughs> option one, yeah, that'll do you. Okay. Yeah. You, yeah. Just for you, Nick Lowe, just read those two options out. It was back on the feedback there, yeah. Richard. Apologies, Councillor Sykes. Uh, the original was three options that were shared at the induction day. Then uh, members asked for two options to be put in the final paper that was attached with the agenda pack for today. Um, option A and option B. Option A is a model that consists of a full committee with two subcommittees with specific and exclusive remits for bus services and Metrolink and rail services. The full committee will meet on a quarterly basis and would look at key strategic reports such as performance monitoring and policy development. The subcommittees would also meet on a quarterly basis and therefore the suggested committee programme pattern would be as, as below. The bus services subcommittee would look at bus performance, hold operators to account and review key policy initiatives around bus services. The Metrolink and Rail subcommittee would look at the performance of Metrolink and Rail services in Greater Manchester, hold specific providers to account and review policy development in relation to relevant areas. Then option B is Overleaf, and that's a single transport committee with no subcommittees, but the agenda would be separated. This model has a monthly meeting of the full transport committee with the agenda divided in, into two sections, one which covers high-level strategic policy items and the other half covering any operational issues in relati relation to a specific mode of transport. Operators related to bus services will be invited to attend one month and operators related to train and Metrolink services will be invited to attend on the alternate month. Is that clear? Thank you. Okay, so on those, um, can I have members again for option A to just show the hands, please? Okay, thank you. And members for uh, option B. 
show the hands please. Okay, thank you very much for that. Like we pointed out at the pre-meetings, um, we'll have a look at it over the next six months, see how things are working. If things need tweaking or changing, then we have the option of, uh, of, of doing that through this committee. Okay, Warren, did you want to speak up on that? Yeah, <coughs> yes, Chair. Just a point of clarification, having accepted option B, I think it's very important that we stress that the meeting will be agenda separated, but it's important that the first part of the meeting is the operational part of the meeting where the operators will be present and then the second part of the meeting will be the, the strategic issues part of the meeting. It's no use doing it the other way around because you don't know how long the strategic issues are going to take to invite the operators along. Whereas if we start with the operators, when we've finished, we can adjourn and go ahead with the strategic part. Yeah, that's well noted. Anybody else? No, thank you very much for that. So moving on, item 14, the draft program of meetings. Everything's down there. Can everybody agree those draft moments, Steve? Sorry, uh, it doesn't mention the August meeting. Uh, there will be an August meeting. Yes. It was omitted from the original agenda. It'll be the 9th of August, yes. and there has been electronic invitations sent for all the whole suite of meetings. But I'll do a list of them all and send that round as That's well. That's why I, I did spot that yesterday, but I noticed it wasn't there, so I wanted to cl clarification. There will be a meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anybody got any other comments on that? No. Thank you very much. Item 15, our network. And we've got Kate and Sean that's doing a double act on this one. Thank you. Um, so, uh, members will be aware that on the 24th of June, uh, the Mayor launched uh, our network, uh, vision for an integrated transport network in 2029, um, very strongly rooted in the 2040 strategy that the predecessor of this committee w was involved in developing, uh, along with the 10 councils and the local enterprise partnership and the combined authority. Um, the report outlines some of the key tenants um, of our network and the journey towards uh, creating an in uh, integrated transport network um, and uh, obviously this committee's role of overseeing the development of that and bringing things together um, we thought it would be quite useful to inform your future work program uh, and for the committee to decide how it may wish to um, support this journey going forward. Yeah, thanks, Chair. It, it, I mean, how much do you want? I could talk for half an hour or I could talk for 30 seconds, really, but um, <laughs> 30 seconds. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was launched on the 24th of June at the um, at home. Where many of you were there to see the Mayor outline his vision for transport across the city region. Uh, the visual representation is set out in the appendix with what has come to be known as the Death Star, but that is the the map with all of the different modes of transport in Greater Manchester all in one place. Uh, our network, the vision for, is about no longer thinking about different modes, it's about seamless travel between those different modes that gets people where they want to be and when they want to be there. So residents and visitors should have a choice of options for public transport and active travel across the city region. Under 1.5, it sets out the Metrolink principles, which are what the vision says will underpin all modes of transport in the city region around convenience, affordability, sustainability, accessibility, and accountability too. As part of this will also be a significant expansion of cycling and walking because the vision is that the first and final mile of any journey in Greater Manchester should be able to be completed either on foot or by bicycle. And if you've seen the map, you can't see it on the appendix, but the mesh that sat behind it, which connected up the different Metrolink stations, the train stations, the bus stops, the way of getting between those two things should you not get spat out by a tram in a place where you need to get on a bus, it would be reasonable to be expect people across GM to be able to get there by walking or cycling through the bike hire system, which is um, an ambition of the mayor and of the 10 leaders. Uh, this will require a significant amount of funding. The mayor has made the case for that uh, on television on the Andrew Marshall most recently, but he's been saying it consistently for a number of months um, about how we deserve the same level of subsidy that Greater London receives in order to fund their integrated transport network. But the message from all of this is that in Greater London, they've had an integrated network or they've never disintegrated it in the way that it was when bus services were deregulated in the 80s. Um, and we deserve the same up here. 
uh, one of the key decisions that will lead us to that was taken at the GMCA meeting on the 18th of June, where leaders collectively agreed to proceed to an independent audit after the recommendation came forward that to get where we needed to be, we would need to have a uh, bus franchise, franchise bus system in Greater Manchester, and that independent audit is underway. Um, the details of all the other different modes of transport and our aspirations around those are set out in the report, and I don't propose to just read through those because I get very frustrated when people do that to me. So with that, I'll leave it there, and I guess Kate and I can take questions or comments. Thank you. Okay, has any members got any questions or comments? Roy? Thank you, Chairman. Um, looking at this map, and I hope I'm reading it right, there's a red line from Staley Bridge through Denton, Reddish South, to Stockport. Can one take it that means at some point, because we all talk about orbital routes, there will be a line of regular trains moving round from Staley Bridge to Stockport and then on to wherever you're going, altering them anywhere. It, it just strikes me, we, we do need, everybody talks about orbital route, the mayor does and so on, and that's still there thanks to a group that I'm not a member of who have kept it open. It only goes once in a week, the train stops and they go on it and they try to preserve Ready South Station and so on. Can this be restored properly to a regular use that's well advertised? And I think that'd be a great asset for that side of the town. It's not my side of the town nowadays, but I know it well. And I hope that's what this means in the plans. Thank you. Okay. Um, I've had Andrew Gwynn and the Reddish thing in my office quite a few times uh, over that thing, so which is brilliant. It was great. I, I, Aspiration, yes. Okay. Who's anybody got any more questions or comments? Yes. Th thank you, Chair. Just just a quick comment. I was at the uh, the event at home. Unfortunately, didn't get a chance to ask this question to to the mayor because uh, he only had limited opportunity to take questions. Unfortunately, um, I do know obviously that um, in the future plan by 2040 there should be a rail a, a tram. A train network linking Bury and Rochdale via Haywood. Um, but my question was sort of, that's going to be the long term. In the short term, I note there's a, a bus route that goes from Haywood to Cheatham Hill um, to the centre of um, Manchester. That actually represents a bus that was uh, that ceased about eight years ago. Do I take it that that bus is A, coming back, and B, what's the timescales and what guarantees can we look at um, to make sure that that's a regular service running, to make sure people can access the city centre in a a, ta a timely fashion as opposed to the current trawl through Middleton and various different estates. Um, so this, um, the map represents obviously the vision around 2029 on the way to 2040, I think, as Councillor O'Rourke's pointed out, in relation to specific current bus services, that's not represented here, but I think it's probably worthwhile our bus team having a chat with you around plans in that area and the current network, if that'd be helpful. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Chair. It's just to, I guess, to back up um, what, what Councillor um, Rook has said there, really. I think in terms of, of the vision, obviously, it's it's a comprehensive vision and it's some, one I very much applaud, particularly with its emphasis on bringing Metrolink to Stockport within the next decade. I think, f for me, what I'm thinking of, though, is... It's that, it's that sort of gap in between before we deliver that. Um, certainly in terms of where I, sort of where I'm, I don't want to wax lyrical, I don't want to become a, you know, a, a surgery, so to speak, but in terms of where I'm within Cheadle and there are other areas within Stockport as well, I guess for, at the moment it's trying to drive access to what we've got at the moment and trying to facilitate that. So, for example, within Cheadle, um, we've got East Isby Metrolink Station, which is, you know, in reasonable proximity, but for many people they'll find it difficult to access. So, obviously, in, until tram train can come into Cheadle, can we consider ways in which we can use the current uh, net bus network or even look at other services? One thing I've sort of put out there is to consider some sort of shuttle service or something like that. Is the ways in which we can look at the current network to facilitate ultimately where we're going um, in, into the future, sort of years hence, really? That's all I'm sort of putting out there. Um, 
we'll certainly look at um, opportunities and I think similar to Councillor Rock, we'd be happy to meet with you to talk through the network in your area and the Cheadle area and, and, and look at what, what could be done. Okay, Sean. I think just, just on these sort of bus points, I mean, I, I share, you know, looking at that map, I would share uh, similar concerns about what the extent of the bus network we're ambitious for is. Um, if the only services that we were going to have in Oldham were the ones represented by the green lines on this map, then I would be not happy with that at all, um, because it looks like we can get to Ashton and that's about it. So this is not an indi indication of what services you're going to have. Um, you know, this is about being able to shape uh, the bus network over the future so that there is a truly integrated uh, form of transport in GM. The reference that um, Councillor Mello made to Cheadle's connections to East Didsbury uh, Metrolink Station. I could say exactly the same of Hollingwood's connections to Hollingwood Metrolink Station. It's a fair old walk from Failsworth and Hollingwood to Hollingwood Metrolink Station. There is no bus between the two. Under a truly integrated transport network, you should be able to get on a bus in Failsworth, get to Hollingwood tram stop, get on the tram and get into Manchester quicker than any direct bus service from Failsworth. This is about joining up all the different modes and all of this can be taken into account when we have the control that we need over the bus and all of the modes of transport to do that and I'm sure you know the offers there from all of the officers to come out to diff if individual districts and and shape what you are expecting as elected members on behalf of your residents the key word is integration yeah okay anybody got any more questions no okay thank you very much for that uh, so moving on to item 17 no 16 transport network performance I'm cutting you out Bob <laughs> Jim. Thanks, Chair. Um, this report is designed to provide an overview of the transport network for all the modes and record their performance during the previous period. The specific performance of the modes will be recorded in the scorecard shown in section four and will be supported in the main by the text in the remainder of the report. The idea being if there's been any exceptional items, we will discuss them and then you'll be able to ask further questions. Uh, officers will be happy to provide members with any further explanations um, if required. The glossary is attached at the end, but sometimes we, we can be a bit technical in our description. So if anybody needs to run through anything, feel free. The key addition to the modes that we've previously reported on at subcommittees is the detail around the highway network. So that includes the local network, the key route network, and probably for the first time the strategic route network which is mainly the motorway network in and around Greater Manchester. Um, in the idea of keeping it short, happy to take any questions. Okay, has any member got any questions or comments on that? No? Thank you very much. Moving on to item 17, forthcoming changes to the bus network and I believe Nick's going to take this. Oh, okay. sorry, before I do that, can I just welcome a notice, sorry, I've got, we've got Gary from One Buzz, we've got Ben from Stagecoach, and we've got Guy from First who's, who's come today. Thank you very much to the operators who have attended. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, everyone. Um, this is a regular port report that was taken to the previous bus subcommittee, so I think several of you will be familiar with it. Uh, the purpose is to update members on forthcoming changes to the GM bus network for you both to note and approve. Um, it is split into three sections. Uh, Annex A relates to the commercial changes made by the bus operators. And that's why it's important that operators are represented today, for which we believe that TFGM has no reason to intervene. Annex B um, relates to services that as a result of the commercial changes by operators, TFGM feel that we do have a reason to intervene. And finally, Annex C relates to the contracts that um, are funded by TFGM and that are re reviewed on a regular basis. Um, I think has already has already been touched on by members in previous discussions. We know that um, bus services are just as important as in terms of here and now, and therefore we are very committed as a team to make sure that we work closely with members in giving you as much up-to-date information and get your engagement in terms of what that network looks like going forward. And we do work very closely with operators 
when looking at that network. So it is important going forward that we build up that relationship. And I know the chair is very keen at a future session to have a briefing session so that you can become familiar with how we work and how we can fully engage you and that you can feel involved. So going on to the main report, open up for Annex A. We'll go through each one individually to give you an opportunity to raise any questions or comments. So if I may, Chair, open it up for comments on Annex A. Anybody got any comments or questions? Annex A? No? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, chair, um, it's page one. Can't read it. It's MR. It's the Oldham Durker. Uh, the uh, some early morning and evening journeys between Durker and Oldham. I've already had representation from um, uh, individuals from that area who, as a result of that withdrawal, uh, are actually having to, especially in the late uh, evenings, uh, having to walk a considerable journey to and from work uh, because that was a very crucial service that's been proposed for withdrawal. Sorry, which service number? Okay, the only other thing I'd like to raise with officers is when we're showing alternatives services, especially if people have to catch more than one bus or get off one onto the other, can we please make sure that we're pointing out this is a public document, so we need to point out to the public if it's a change of service from one company to another. I'm looking at 594, for instance. We've got diamond service and first service. So if we can make sure on future documents we can make that clear. Thank you. Certainly, thank you for those comments, Chair. Certainly, when we are looking at whether we decide to replace a commercial service, we do, do give due consideration to the alternatives. Obviously, there are always individual circumstances, and we're happy to, to, to look at those in a little bit more detail outside of this meeting. OK, I've got Sean up. So I'll bring you in in a second. Yeah, it's just an observation on the 81 service, which uh, my colleague, Councillor Raymond, has already picked up on. Um, I note that the alternative service in the evening is operated by Stagecoach Manchester, so that means that there may be people that use this service in one direction with one operator and will be now be forced to use it in the other direction with another operator and have to buy a more expensive ticket in order to do so. I think it just underlines how desperate we are for a properly integrated ticketing system across GM so that you're not financially penalised as a result of decisions like this being taken. Thank you. Agreed. Guy? Thanks, Chairperman. Yeah, I, th I think just to explain the nature of this uh, change, um, it does, uh, paper does say that there are alternatives available. The main service operating between uh, Oldham and Moston in the evening is currently a, a supported service operated by Stagecoach. That runs every hour. The only journeys that first operate currently in the evenings are, some ju are just two journeys. So the amount of uh, journeys that are being withdrawn between Oldham and Muston is quite minimal, and there is a TFGM supported service that provides that link every hour, and that, that, as far as I know, that's not being changed. As far as early morning provision is concerned, that's just being modified, and the first journey, the earliest journey that we currently operate from Oldham into Manchester, which is a 409, if I remember rightly, for example, that's not changing as part of this, this change. So it, the headline might look worse than it actually is. There is, there is not much reduction on, this, on the section between Oldham and Moston. So there are still regular facilities available for customers on that section of route. Thanks, Chair. OK, is anybody? Oh, Angelica. Thank you. Just a very quick one with regards to the 84A service. Very pleased that you are uh, suggesting to provide a later journey back to the Merseybank uh, estate. Um, however, when this service was uh, redesigned, uh, we lost a section between Merseybank and Withington Hospital. And this is a major frustration and complaint from the residents around this area. So I would like you to sort of reconsider that. And another comment with regards to the 84 
I'm really not surprised that this um, journey is uh, withdrawn. Um, I, I, local residents are saying that the service wasn't uh, very well advertised to begin with. So, of course, there is no patronage and now it's been taken away. So I think in the future it might be a good idea to see how we work closer when we are putting services and how we canvas uh, support for members, but also the route for 84, it did not, it just does not make any format sense at all. So just not surprised that you are taking it away. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I mean, uh, I was going to just mention something on those lines myself, but I, was, uh, I thought we were still on. Up, I think we were, st we were still on section A, and that's obviously in sec and that was on section A, wasn't it? That was on section C, was it? So I'll come back to the comments in a minute. I'll just be confused. Thank you. Yeah, um, I'm sure you're expecting this, but on the V1 and V4 services, um, I don't think we're arguing that if there's less passengers in the summer months, then we can understand the timetable change. But the big question is what happens after the summer months? Because, um, you know, on the run up to Christmas, between September and December, the figures are going to be in excess of 60,000 a week using this service. And, you know, we need reassurances from TFTM as well as from FIRST that um, that we're not going to have passengers like they have been being left at bus stops because they can't get on the buses, basically. So, you know, uh, do we know what's happening from September onwards yet? Nick? Thank you, Councillor Jones. Yeah, this is very much referring to the summer timetable. We uh, totally understand your concerns relating from September. We are working with First and Guy in particular around looking at opportunities from September and that's one of the key aims of bringing back the recommendations to the August meeting. <laughs> okay. Any other questions on Annex B? No. Annex C? Steve, did you want to come in on that? <coughs> Thank you. I mean, just uh, following up the concerns that uh, Angela Leake has raised, there's a number of changes around the 84 uh, and others, which obviously are. Again, I'm not clear about the advertisement for them all and the way they've actually been working. Uh, I've not seen a, I've had a great deal of responses, but I think it's probably because they've not been advertised properly. And I think this is the concerns about moving forward, how we can actually work more effectively around this. Uh, I think the sort of short notice in terms of how it filters through and the mechanisms is not always great. So perhaps if we can actually look at how, actually how we do this, it would be, that would be helpful. And obviously there are, on some other matters, there are a couple of, uh, other changes which which I can support and so and go along with, but obviously I know there are limited budgets to what we can actually do, and and, and, and that is the issue where we come to. But hopefully moving forward, we can actually uh, make some changes as the mayor sort of uh, looks at other options around this, because it, it, I think it is concern that uh, particularly later at night there are little in the way of services there. So I think it's I would welcome some of those where where there's, there's positive change. But I think we really need to start looking actually. Uh, the effects this, but I'm concerned about actually how we disseminate the information properly as well. It's something I'd like to look at over the coming months uh, on this committee, how, how we can actually improve those so we the public will know about it. Uh, I think in some areas the information will be spread out better, but I think it's uh, actually how we can get that mechanism out to the public as far as I'm concerned. I'll be speaking with our own office in Trafford about this a bit more, but it's actually getting uh, the public, because I've not had a great deal of feedback, but then some time later I've had in the past people come back to me and say, I wasn't aware of this change. So I think it's actually getting out much quicker to people to, uh, and actually, because by the time we've done this now, it's too late for people to intervene and that's my concern around some of these changes. Okay, like Nick said to Angelique, if you've got any suggestions, then please take it up and have a, have a chat with, with Nick or Alison. No problem at all. Okay. Sorry, Ad Liam. Chair, forgive me, it may seem a, a finickety point. Um, when I was cycling through these, I did notice the, the renaming of some of the Rochdale Bay routes as uh, the R1s and the B1s, etc. Um, in terms of accessibility, though, um, I know this, this may seem very daft, but you know, when I was reading it, I was thinking, oh my gosh, there's another 84 route in, in Rochdale now, it's actually the B4. But actually, there's a serious point about the way we number our routes. And actually, you know, if you're physically looking for your route, there's people who will struggle to see that and will 
you know, lead to small amounts granted, but some confusion. Could we perhaps consider another way of renaming those um, so as not to confuse the letter B with the number eight? Thank you. Uh, no such thing as a, as a silly question, I can assure you. Um, happy to take some advice on that going forward. And I think it just reiterates the importance of doing some form of member briefing because already there's some really good feedback comments that I think we need to engage members on going forward. So thanks for those comments and we'll certainly take those away. Okay. Any member got any other questions or comments? No? Okay. So moving on. Can we move item 18, exclu exclusion of the press and public, please? Thank you very much for, uh, for your attendance.